Hi, I'm here with Chris, Director of Engineering for Croft Production Systems. Today we'll be talking about a Joule Thompson system, also known as a JT. Chris, tell us what a JT is. JT systems, like the one that we have right here, are primarily used for three different applications. The first being NGL recovery, which is the removal of the NGLs for an additional revenue source. The second being dew point specification for pipeline spec. And the third being the reduction of the BTUs of the natural gas for use in natural gas powered engines. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of cross design? Sure. JT systems are rather simple a piece of equipment. The gas will come in at the end of the skid. The gas will go through a gas to liquid heat exchanger, which is this exchanger here at the bottom of the unit. The gas will be pre-chilled and then go into the gas to gas exchanger where the temperature will drop further. The gas will go all the way through this gas to gas exchanger and then into this JT valve, which is just a pressure reduction valve. This will take high pressure gas drop the pressure and then use that pressure drop as a chilling effect to reduce the temperature of the gas and start creating liquids. The kind of liquids that will be collected are your hexanes, pentanes, butanes, and propanes that will collect in this cold separator. We then dump those liquids into our gas to liquid heat exchanger to use those cold liquids as a chilling medium for that natural gas. The nice BTU reduced gas will then exit the cold separator go into the gas to gas exchanger where it uses that cold temperature to pre-chill the incoming gas. Let's take a look at a simplified flow diagram of the JT unit to get a better idea of how the liquids and gases flow through the system. Rich hot gas enters the liquid to gas heat exchanger where it is cooled by cold NGLs coming from the cold separator. The rich gas will then continue to the gas to gas heat exchanger where it is cooled by lean cold gas coming from the cold separator. The gas will then go through a JT valve where it takes a pressure drop. We will use the chilling effect of that pressure drop to chill down the gas and ultimately reach our cold separation temperature. The cold gas will then go into the separator where the liquids are separated out of the gas. The liquids will fall to the bottom of the separator and be dumped down into the liquid to gas heat exchanger where the cold fluids are used to cool the incoming hot gas. The lean gas that is separated in the cold separator is then sent to the gas to gas heat exchanger where it cools the incoming rich gas from the system. The gas then leaves the unit. Now that we know how a JT system works, here are some of our clients frequently asked questions. Chris, why do you recommend a high efficiency heat exchanger? So a high efficiency heat exchanger is gonna allow us to get the most out of the pressure drop that we're gonna have. So if we can recover as much of that cold effect as we can, then we can get colder in our cold separator with the least amount of pressure drop. And why does insulation matter? So the insulation is very important because this unit is getting very cold, we wanna be able to keep that cold in the system, but also because it is out in the, in the environment, we wanna be able to keep radiant heat and ambient temperatures out of the system as well. That way we can maintain the performance of the unit. So what does the hot gas bypass do? The hot gas bypass allows us to maintain a temperature within the system. If the unit gets too cold, the hot gas bypass will open up and limit the cold temperature that the unit can achieve. That way we stay within the rated design temperature of the system. So what is a methanol pump used for? The methanol pump is used to inject methanol into the JT system. Methanol injection is required to make sure that there's no hydrates that occur within the system which could plug off the flow. So tell us what kind of maintenance is involved in a JT system. The JT systems are very simple units. The operator just needs to check to make sure that we are maintaining our cold temperature and then check the other controllers and valves on the unit to make sure they're operating properly. So what do you do with the NGLs? Typically the NGLs are sent to a pressurized storage tank on location. There they'll wait for a truck to come and take them away as an additional revenue source. If the application is for fuel gas, a lot of times the NGLs aren't recovered and they'll just be sent to a low pressure separator. What standard sizes do cross systems come in? While we can build a custom application for whatever the client parameters are, our standard package skid units come in 2 million, 5 million, and 10 million cubic feet a day packages. Well, thank you, Chris, for walking us through a JT system. If you have additional questions or want to learn more about our JT systems, you can visit us at www.crosssystems.net or you can call us at 979-793-2100.